Member, Mr. Rob Bonta, how are you? Doing well, thank you. How are you? Do you speak Tagalog at all? A little bit. Uh, yeah, not much. Salamat po, mabuhay. The standard one. <laughs> so what will be your next uh, bill that you're going to present to to your district? You know, we're working on a, a host of issues that really affect the district, but one of the most important ones is, is homelessness, affordable housing, and um, tenant protection. So we have a a number of bills that we're going to roll out to help address th those issues, um, including making sure that individuals who have a uh, who, who rent the place they call home, and it's millions of people in California, can only be evicted if it's for a just reason, not for a discriminatory reason or an arbitrary reason, um, or for a retaliatory reason. So that's one of our bills that we're working on. I'm also uh, working to end the use of for-profit private prisons in the state yes, of California. Yes. I think that's good, smart justice. It's it's the right criminal justice reform. We don't need operators of our prisons thinking about profit and 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 cutting corners and um, not investing in in Californians and, and human beings who need to re-enter our communities successfully. And we need to have investments in rehabilitation programs and other supports. So, so we uh, from criminal justice reform to health care to environmental protection to early childhood education, um, affordable housing. The list goes on. We're we're, we're trying to take. How about the immigration? Yes, one of the things I'm working on right now is trying to uh, ensure that our immigrants, our Filipino immigrants, our Latino immigrants, all of our immigrants from California, before they are uh, um, ever deported or go through a deportation proceeding, that they have access to a council, yes. that they have support, that they have someone who can uh, guide them and give them advice. Uh, you know, we, we have a right to counsel for our, our poor Californians when they can go to prison or when they can face criminal punishment. But if you could be sent to a country that you may not even know, torn apart from your family, uh, sent out of this country, then you should have a counsel too. So we're working on that as, as, as one way. Um, we're also working on the um, the issue of, of public charge that, that Trump has has taken on recently. So we're doing everything and anything in our power to stand up for, defend, and protect our, our immigrants because I believe they're under full frontal assault from the Trump administration. I also asked Mr. Cox, um, TJ Cox, about the aspiration to run for presidency. Are, do you ever have that aspiration? <laughs> I think a lot of people have that aspiration right now if it means that Trump wouldn't be president. Some I heard somebody say that... Um, you know, I, I vote for a, a warm body who's not Trump. So, <laughs> tr tr Trump is—he's been a problem. He's—he's—he's he's hurt people that we care about. He's attacked and assaulted the values that we care about, the values of opportunity for all and, and equity and, and justice for our people and inclusion of everyone. That's not his vision. That's not who he is. And he's—he's he's attacked California. He's attacked our immigrants. He's attacked our health care. He's attacked our environment. He's attacked our civil rights, and that's a problem for me. So I'm pushing And back. we need to bring that back within the unity, because this is United States, not just one race. It's United States. So uh, how can you bring that back to young generation out there who's, met, who's actually thinking right now that everything is separated? How can you convince them that we are all united? You know, we have to push back against uh, what Trump has been doing from from the White House, he, he, he has a huge bully pulpit. And, and, and people look at his behavior and they think it's okay. He's given people permission and license to be their worst selves, to act out of hate and divisiveness and xenophobia and discrimination. And that, that's wrong. We need to show the opposite. We need to show what I believe Obama showed before, that we should be, be, we should be our best selves and we should uh, act out of kindness and generosity and respect for our fellow human being yeah. and, and care about our community, not just ourselves, yeah. and, 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 and unite people, not divide, um, and, and heal pain, not create it. And so, bigger enemy to our democracy than apathy. It, it, it's, it's, it's about engagement and, and, and being involved and being active. And you know, some people say it's a certain person or a certain party. No, it's the, the, the enemy of democracy is apathy. So you must be involved, you must care, you must be informed, and you must take actions to, to fight for your values because every person is a leader. You don't need a title. Um, you don't need to be elected to anything. Um, some of the greatest change that we've ever seen in our, in our country and in our world have been from everyday people united with other everyday people, committed to a common cause and achieving great things. So we need to continue to do that. And, you know, I think some of the Republicans um, 
who are defenders of Trump and apologists to Trump and supplicants for him are, are, are not uh, honoring what I believe their obligation is. Their obligation is to America and the American people, not to one person uh, or one set of beliefs. And I, I just appeal to them to look beyond one person.